Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. We are at the Internet of Retail event in a place called Gerrard's Cross outside London. We don't know why he's Cross, but they've named a little town after him. Anyway, um, I'm talking with Edmund Mesrobian, who is the CTO of Tesco. Edmund, thanks very much for talking. Pleasure to be here. Let's begin at the beginning. What is the impact the Internet of Things is having on the retail industry now? You're with a huge you know, supermarket group. What effect is it having? Well, I think uh, we've ex been experimenting with Internet of Things for quite a while, for over a decade, to try to understand what does it mean to be able to sense information in a new way, uh, what has been obvious in, in a digital world for quite a while. How do, how do we take th that and be able to sense in our environments, our enterprise, whether it be to understand product availability or information, uh, or is it the sense of customer flows and traffic patterns? It gives us an ability to collect information. Part of that is then, how do you actually use it to create customer value, to, create, to delight customers, to, to make their, their journeys better every day? And that is where the challenge is. Collecting is one part of it, so the device side of internet retail is straightforward. But then be able to go and action that by collecting it, understanding it, and then reflecting back into some, some outcome that a customer would enjoy or a colleague would benefit from to, to, to do a better job. And at the end of the day, it's about serving customers. What is the strategy as far as the internet of retail for Tesco? Well, I think the strategy is multi-factored. First, we want to solve some of the core problems that retail faces, and that is availability. How do you get b better information for uh, managing the workforce in, in, uh, in our stores, uh, getting better at replenishment, uh, so that we can actually order and have the right products on the shelves for our customers. Uh, so those are the practical sides of it. But then it gets into the, the how do you create an environment that connects the online experiences we offer our customers with their physical uh, uh, experiences? Mm -hmm. How do we remove friction out of shopping? And we believe that Internet of Things provides some of the technologies we would need to create a frictionless environment so that customers can go from, from their online experience to their, to their uh, uh, you know, in retail, physical brick and mortar experience and not notice the difference, that they are engaged the same way, they can interact the same way, information is shared, and at the end of the day, we provide the value. Do you have, you must have an ongoing program to implement all this. How far along it are you? How much do you envisage that the internet of retail, as far as Tesco is concerned, is going to change over the next months and years? Well, I think we're, we're investing, investing wisely. It, it's not one of those things where it's just about throwing money at a problem. It's about understanding what are the problems we're trying to solve. I mentioned availability as one example, but how to provide context for customers? How do we understand what they were looking for when they're at the shelf edge? How do we understand what they're looking for in terms of alternative choices that they might want to experience for, for health, health and well-being? And the, the part of that is understanding how we share information. So with privacy in mind, how do we actually get customers to trust us that if we, if they share information and we can create that kind of unified experience online and in store, we can benefit them and we can create value for them. And it is those kind of programs on data analytics, systems to collect information, protect it, and use it wisely to create value. We're investing heavily in those capabilities. Now, it's fairly obvious what Tesco gets from this amount of data. You can slice it and dice it in various ways and learn a lot from it. What does a consumer actually get? Well, I think the consumer benefits in many ways. Uh, there's the, the benefits in terms of availability, like I mentioned in the store, getting an understanding of where the products are that they might want to buy, if, they, if that store doesn't have it, where to go find it. There's some obvious things of that nature. But I think that the ones that are more interesting is how do we get to where customers will, will allow us into their home so that they can think of us as a partner in their daily lives and, and, and provide them information about health benefits of products or uh, if they want to cook a recipe and they need some ingredients, they, they know their last shopping trip, they know what we have in their, in their refrigerator so we can actually give them suggestions of what to cook. There's many, many ways we can reach our customers and, and provide value to them and we're just exploring it. It's a fertile field and it's early days. Edmund. Tesco hasn't had that great a term of it in the recent past. It's had some difficulties. Obviously, the strategizing is to get yourself out of that, to move forward, and so on. Does that involve the redefinition of retail as a business, as far as Tesco is concerned? Well, I think that the first thing starts with the customer. So one of the things that we're trying to do is put the customer back at the center of what we do. And so as our mission statement, trying to serve our customers a bit better every day is core to that. And So how do you go about doing that? One of the things you have to do is reinvent how do you get a 
provide retail experiences that are unified across an online journey and a, and a, and a, and a store visit. So revisiting the platform view of it. So retail is a platform. We look at it, how do we create a platform that enables those experiences to be manifested? Because at the end of the day, it's about serving the customers, creating value for our colleagues so that they can create better experiences in our communities, and at the end of the day, create shareholder value. So it, there is a reinvention happening. We talked about the good side of things. Um, what about the pitfalls? What are they? What have you come across since you've been doing this? Oh gosh, there are, there are a number of pitfalls. Uh, first of all, like a, with any kind of technology-led initiative, when you think about Internet of Things, there's an opportunity to go spend money unwisely and go chase <laughs> that shiny device mm. because one thinks that the device is a manifestation of a solution. As opposed to looking at what are the fundamental problems you're trying to solve and make sure that you test and learn into it. So culturally changing from just chasing a shiny new object, a new device that can provide some short-term benefit, taking a step back and thinking about what is the longer benefit we're trying to create? What is the experience we're trying to manifest? What's the problem we're trying to solve? And then, and instead of guessing that you, know, you have the answer, test, the, test your way into it. Take slow, measured steps, measure carefully, and, and really get to a data-driven culture. And part of the cultural change is to get to a data-driven culture to make decisions about products we want to build, experiences we want to create, by testing and learning our way into them as opposed to some epiphany that one might have. Now, there's Tesco Club Card, of course, which is uh -huh. famous, and that gets a lot of information to you, a lot of data. Obviously, that is different to the Internet of Retail, but is it part of it? Yes, it is. The Club Card approach, once again, is trying to create an intimacy with the household. And, uh, and in return, trying to get to that to the individual level. So if you think about what we learn about customers based on the club card participation, we want to extend that to, to be able to get that to an online experience and, and to use that to understand how we should try to, to uh, advantage them of opportunities. And so it's been a household kind of construct, and we're looking at the individual because individual shopping patterns are changing, and we act as individuals when we shop, when we shop, where we want to shop. And we think that marrying the two is, is the future, and we think Club Card's here to stay, and, and, and it's going to have a next, next chapter. Thank you. Now, what about you as a technologist? Let's move on to the technology of the things here. How do you as a CTO manage, prioritize and manage all the disparate elements that are involved in the Internet of Retail? How do you go about it in your daily work? Oh, wow. Well, I think that the simplest way to say is that we're trying to create a platform. So think of retail as a platform. Yeah. The, the phrase has been used quite a bit recently. Yeah. And we look at it creating a platform that, that provides a set of APIs and services to allow all parts of our business and enterprise to leverage a common understanding of what's happening in our enterprise, be it a customer-centric view, a product view, or, and so on and so forth. And therefore, by sharing the information and allowing different parts of our business to leverage that to make decisions, I think we are, we are reinventing how we think about retail and, and my job is to make sure that it's democratized, it's available, and that brilliant work happens across our different groups so that we, 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 we benefit the customers at the end of it. What about the ecosystem? We hear in everything, in every vertical market, we hear it across lots of stuff, the notion of the ecosystem. What is the Internet of Retail ecosystem, do you think? What does it look like? How does it work? Well, if you that's a great question. If you think about the analogy to open source in a little bit, we're trying to create an environment and a platform that is extensible. Now, the first thing we're trying to do is make sure that different parts of our organization can leverage that information and create value, products, mm. uh, and, and applications and such. However, we also think that innovation is not just limited to Tesco, and that we think that our partners can participate greatly. And one of the things that we want to do is be able to go and extend our, our platform to allow others to participate and create applications and experiences, and once again, powered by Tesco under the covers. You led me very nicely, Edmund, into the um, next question, which is about the technology itself. Where do you as Tesco get your technology from? Do you invent it yourselves? Do you source it from traditional suppliers, uh, or from the likes of Vodafone, or BT, or Verizon, or AT&T, whatever it may be? Do you buy, it's a lo longish question, but I'm trying to get to how, how it works. Do you lease or buy package solutions from systems integrators, or do you have very sector-specific retail vendors and solutions that you apply? Gosh, I think the answer is all of it. <laughs> and I, I, I think that the, the, the history of the company has been to try to find the partner and the, and the software package that best uh, addresses the needs of that particular, whether it's a supply chain, a warehouse management system, and as such. 
However, we also think that there's room where we have to innovate and own the IP and create value. So it's not about not working with partners, and we have very strategic partners, but it's also taking responsibility for areas that we want to innovate, areas like data analytics, areas like understanding uh, how we want to build rich experiences online, uh, areas of where logistics and fulfillment and how to get that product to the customer when they want it. We believe that those areas are fertile ground for innovation and we need to be part of owning that responsibility. And once again, leveraging partners where appropriate. Okay, thank you. Now, what about, you've talked about partners um, and presumably you collaborate quite a lot with your partners. Is that an ongoing thing or do you do it on a particular you know, specific basis for the, for, the, for the length of a project or anything like that? Or do you have long-term relationships with the partners that, that, and so you can plan the way forward? I think it's a combination. I think there's some, sometimes when we have projects where we just need to get something done and we, 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 we find the right solution and a partner and we get that executed. But we also have a strategic set of partners that have been working on for a number of years. And, and, and those are uh, in areas of security and other things where we have a long-term need and relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where it takes time to build the trust and that you're collaborating together and you're co-inventing together. And so uh, we have both of those. We have examples of that. We have examples where we do it ourselves and examples of where we have a project-based approach. Final question to you, Ed, and thanks very much for this. Um, what about the role of the traditional network operator, the communications carrier, in all of this? I mean, many of the big networks have considerable expertise in IoT, and they've got huge networks and so on. Do you play with them? Do you involve with the likes of national carriers, BT and so on, or the traditional network operators? Well, I, I the answer is yes, we, uh, connectivity is critical. If you think about connected world, and internet retail is a classic example of a connected world, we are very much about connecting all of our enterprise with a digital dial tone. And that at its core requires a network signal. And so we work with, with our partners uh, to, to provide that. So we have a number of partners to help the connectivity. We have a big initiative on connectivity to get our, our stores, our warehouses, our distribution points, and our, and our, and our corporate uh, uh, areas all connected because at the end of the day, it's what's going to remember that the dial tone is what matters. And so we're working closely with partners in that, uh, not only in, in the UK, but also globally. Excellent. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.